We have some major Raptors updates as the Toronto Raptors made a significant decision on Davion Mitchell here today that does have implications on his future with the organization. So we'll discuss that, including some injury updates to specifically RJ Barrett and other guys that are out there on the roster. And it's looking way better than we thought with the scary injury that RJ Barrett suffered during preseason. So we have a lot of things to break down in this video. But folks, again, if you guys are a part of that 67% that haven't the subscribe button just yet, the season is just around the corner, and we're pumped. We got a lot of stuff planned for the start of the season, a lot of things on the go. So make sure you guys hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing. And a reminder, Fantasy League, it's starting up this week. So make sure to check out the community post. Email me directly if you're interested in joining the channel membership to pop on to the Fantasy League. So lots of stuff on the go. But let's dive into the news. Let's dive into what's happening because we have first a couple of uh, Toronto Raptors injury updates to discuss. Now, obviously, RJ Barrett went down with injury in the first game of this Toronto Raptors preseason, and people were concerned about his availability, his ability to actually play for the Toronto Raptors to start off this season. But things are looking a lot better than people expected in regards to R.J. Barrett's recovery because Jacoby Walter suffered a similar injury and then he was out for basically all of preseason and isn't expected to start for the start of this year. And then we said, oh, OK, R.J. Barrett got the same injury, what? 10 days later, so RJ could miss the first couple weeks of the season. With how dangerous of a schedule that we have, that would not be good for this Raptors team. But we did get an update in regards to what's actually going on. As RJ Barrett and Jacoby Walter went through practice today, no contact or live play for either guy. But RJ Barrett is day-to-day, -day while uh, Jacoby Walter is 7-10 to 10 days behind him. And Kelly Olenek did not practice, and Bruce Brown is doing a bit of one-on-zero workouts in a penny. So, basically, the big update here is R.J. Barrett, who went through practice and is considered day-to-day -day in regards to uh, his availability in terms of what he's able to do. And, frankly, this is very, very exciting because, again, opening night, I want R.J. Barrett healthy. I want him raring to go because, you know, assuming he's healthy. Right, we don't want him, uh, you know, going out there and risking injury and stuff like that. But when uh, we got news, and uh, Josh Lumber put this pretty well, so I'll let him say it. But interesting that uh, Jacoby Walter sustained the same injury ten days before Barrett, of course, and then people heal differently. And it's worth noting that Jacoby is a rookie who missed the entirety of his first training camp, so it makes sense that they want to be cautious with him and bring him along slowly. So you know, it's interesting that R.J. Barrett's coming back a little bit sooner than Jacoby, but again, different muscle mass, and you can have the same injury and have it different severe in terms of what's going on, in terms of what's happened with your team. And there was a little bit of concern with R.J. Barrett because Josh Lundberg himself made a tweet saying he recovered from surgery and it was initially reported as a contusion. So, you know, we didn't really know what to think, how long R.J. Barrett would be out, but the fact that he's day-to-day, -day, regardless of if he plays in the first game of opening night or not, it is extremely encouraging because slow recovery, uh, slow turnaround time in terms of his ability to get back out there on the court. And with the summer that he had, with the close to last season, you want him to be able to carry on the momentum that he's had from such a good summer. And, you know, if he's dealing with a super long-term injury, then that's just tough to really, uh, you know, sustain all the momentum that's going on with the team. So, you know, being able to have that starting unit, that, you know, regular group for uh, Darko Ryakovich to be able to play with, to have in the mix, is very, very positive for this Raptors team. So, great news there. You know, still no updates on or no major progressions for Kelly Olenek or Bruce Brown, but, you know, we'll see how those guys kind of come into the mix because, again, the Raptors want to contend, want to compete. You know, not, not contend for the championship, but contend in these games to start off the season. Love him or hate him, Bruce Brown needs to be out there in the lineup. Kelly Olenek needs to be out there in the lineup, you know, for this Raptors depth. So, that's, uh, that's the kind of updates there on that front for those guys. But we also got an update in regards to the Toronto Raptors making a major decision in regards to Davion Mitchell. Now... Davion Mitchell started a ton of games over the course of preseason and did look pretty solid. The jump shot definitely was up and down, but we saw a lot from Davion Mitchell's ability to guard on the ball, to really be that guy. What his nickname is off night, because every time a player goes up, up against him, they have an off night because of how strong, how much of a pest Davion Mitchell is out there on the defensive end. Now, so he's been good, not earth shattering, but he's been good for the Toronto Raptors, but there is a guy that, uh, you know, has kind of almost stolen his glory because they play a similar style, similar position, and, you know, a similar game in Jamal Shedd, and obviously Shedd is, uh, you know, the Toronto Raptors rookie, has the more upside, you know, what people are saying, because, again, we haven't seen him play out there in the NBA, but Davion Mitchell, there was a, an interesting deadline that happened today as the Raptors had the opportunity to give him a rookie extension, a rookie scale extension, and we saw, you know, from, what, Jalen Johnson to Jalen Suggs to... Yeah, Jaden Hardy over there. Lots of Jays out there getting contract extensions today. But uh, I think Trey Murphy and uh, the New Orleans Pelicans. But 
Davion Mitchell was also eligible, but a deal did not go down. As essentially, uh, you know, Raptors do not reach a contract extension with fourth-year guard Davion Mitchell. The Toronto Raptors have not reached the extension, and the deadline was essentially today, so he will enter restricted free agency next summer. So, uh, basically, you know, Davion Mitchell obviously was brought in by the Toronto Raptors via trade of the season, so it makes sense just not having that big of a sample size to really deal with, even though you've seen him play for Sacramento, you've seen him play in preseason, you had him for training camp, we thought, hey, maybe there was an opportunity for for the team to, you know, figure out what this guy's worth. But really the only way a deal was getting done if Masai Ujiri thought he was getting an absolute steal of a contract. Because, again, it doesn't make sense to risk the flexibility, to risk whatever's going on without seeing him play for an entire season, especially where Davion Mitchell is entering restricted free agency. So the Toronto Raptors still have all the power, still have all the leverage in terms of being able to keep him on the roster if he does have a breakout year or if another team, if he's interested in joining another team, right? The Raptors still hold all the cards in terms of what's going on there. And yes, we also have uh, to evaluate things with Jamal Shedd because again, if Jamal Shedd becomes a star, becomes a beast, comes this, you know, there's an argument to be made, even though I think in a cup in the preseason game where we saw IQ Jamal Shedd and Davion Mitchell all get significant minutes out there in the rotation, you know, they can play together. Some might argue that having Davion Mitchell is a bit redundant when if Jamal Shedd is playing well. Maybe you could say vice versa if Davion Mitchell becomes, you know, that star. Because he's still a young guy as well. I mean, it kind of gets overlooked, but Davion Mitchell, five points, one point three rebounds, two assists last season, you know, limited run for the Sacramento Kings. But you know, 26 years old, but a couple only a few seasons out there in the NBA older than Jamal Shedd for sure but not like over the hill in terms of an NBA vet and is definitely further along as a jump shooter than Jamal Shedd so again Davion Mitchell right is out there can take that uh, step up is an interesting sort of piece for this Toronto Raptors team but I get why this decision was made all right the Raptors they didn't know what we still don't know. They Until you see him play for half a season, you don't know what you have. Similar to Dennis Schroeder last year. Or until you see him play, you don't really know what you have out there in regular season action. They don't know what they have in players at a similar position. So the only day, way that deal was actually going to go down is if uh, Davion Mitchell is willing to accept something right, crazy small, crazy easy that keeps the Raptors' flexibility open for the future. Now, again, he's entering restricted free agency. I don't think we have to worry too much. Again, it's still a tradable contract. It's still a contract that, you know, the Raptors can, uh, you know, maintain the flexibility as Bobby Webster, Masai Ujiri have been very outspoken on. And regardless of them signing that uh, extension with Davion Mitchell or not, right, it's still a positive move, you know, trading away Jalen McDaniels to get Jamal Shedd in that deal to get a 20, uh, 2025, I believe, uh, Portland Trailblazer second, which is looking to be almost like a like another first round pick. And then also uh, just saw show, which was a salary dump. But again, the guys to look out now for uh, contract updates, and this is coming from uh, what's the Aaron Rhodes. Uh, the Toronto Raptors' next order of business will be the two fourth-year team options for Ochai Abaji and Grady Dick, which uh, will have to be decided upon for October 31st. The Raptors will certainly pick up Dick's option and will likely keep Abaji around for the 2025-2026 season. The way Ochai Abaji is playing, that's definitely uh, the route the team should go, in my opinion. Obviously, Grady Dick is getting his option picked up, but again, Ochai Abaji has definitely shown me enough. Even though it was an ugly summer league for him, I think he's done a lot in preseason to, you know, calm the nerves of a lot of Toronto Raptors fans to, to keep things rocking. So definitely uh, lots of stuff going on here now at this point. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below about all these Toronto Raptors decisions and moves and things like that. Anyway, subscribe to the channel if you guys haven't already. I'm signing out. Cheers.